Hello everyone, and welcome to a shed. Yeah, there's not nothing much exciting about this. It's, uh, yes, we'll find out where we are in a minute. Hmm, there must be an engine down there. And indeed there is. Yes. This is the Chorus Railway... Uh, yeah, today I'm, on, today I'm on the Chorus Railway, which is a narrow gauge, as you can tell, is a narrow gauge route. Um, which is, I think, one of the few... I think it's one of only, like, what, three Welsh routes that we've got in Train Simulator at the moment? Uh, I think the others are the... what is it, the Mardi branch? And the South Wales Coastal route. Although that that latter the latter is not entirely Welsh because there was a little bit on the English side. Anyway, we're in the, currently at the moment. I'm in the sheds at I think it's pronounced uh, Mice Poeth. Again, I'm te I'm terrible at, at Welsh names. What's this? That looks. Is it just me or does that look like two miniature water wheels? Because I'm not sure what else they're meant. To, I'm not sure what else they're meant to represent. Why is this guy walking around the track? He shouldn't be doing that. Anyway, so today I'm just going to do a quick little, a quick run from Meispoeth up to Chorus itself. First of all, just need to make sure the points are set so that we can go over into the platform. Well, for want of a better word, platform, and pick up the coaches. Yes, the thing about this route is that it is incredibly short. I believe in real life the Chorus Railway, well, the preserved version of the Chorus Railway between Chorus and Mice Poeth is only about, I think, what, three quarters of a mile long? Whereas the train simulator version includes this whole section down here to a place called Tani Coid. At least I think that's how you're supposed to say it. Again, I'm not that good with... I don't... I don't consider myself to be all that good with Welsh place names. Um, in real life, this section uh, doesn't well hasn't been rebuilt because in real life the Chorus Railway or the original Chorus Railway used to go from I think Macuncliffe to Aberclyffeny. Again, I, I once again I apologise for the, the poor pronunciation. Um, yeah, so I think the original line was closed in, what, 1947, I believe? And, um... And, uh... I think it was... I think it was around 1966 when the Preservation Society was set up to try and reinstate the... to, to, to try and reinstate the line. Apparently one of the founding members of the society was a chap called Alan Meaden. And this tiny little, this bizarre little thing, it carries his name. Yes, I don't know if I've ever seen a more ridiculous looking locomotive in this game before. Anyway, here's, here comes number seven, as she's known. Some of you may recognise... Hold, that's a really good shot. Yeah, it is. Anyway. As I was saying, so I think it was around, or well, by 1996, they had managed, the society had managed to relay the track between Chorus and uh, Most Poeth. And apparently, I say 1996 because that was, I believe, that was around the time when one of the two ex-Chorus locomotives, number four, Edward Thomas, uh, came over, okay, returned to her old line. Well what was left of her old line and uh, did some demonstration runs although apparently at the time they weren't actually they weren't legally allowed to carry passengers and they wouldn't and it wouldn't be like that they weren't, wouldn't be allowed to until I think it's what was it 2005 well 2005 was when number seven was completed yes um, well I assume some of the viewers will be familiar with the or with tornado the Peppercorn A1 steam locomotive that was built from scratch between, oh, I think the project started in the 1990s and she was completed in 2008. A lot of people say that that's the that was the first locomotive to be built brand new in the UK since 
the 9F class number 92220 Evening Star, which was built in 1960. But that would be completely and utterly wrong, uh, as much as I hate to say it that way. Um, yeah, well, the simple reason is that there were some new build projects completed before Tornado. An example, of course, is the engine that I'm driving today, which is, of course, Chorus Number no. 7. Uh, this engine was built in. Uh, I think I don't know when they were. I don't know when the project was started, but I do know that the engine was completed in around 2005. And this engine is based on. Well, is apparently meant to be based on Edward on the original uh, so-called Tattoo class locomotive, which as I mentioned earlier, number four, Edward Thomas. Those of you that are familiar with, um, reasonably familiar with, Tom well, the older seasons of Thomas the Tank Engine will know that Edward Thomas served as the basis for the character Peter Sam, originally called, who originally was originally called Stuart. Um, so I guess in a manner of, I suppose if the Chorus Railway, as the preserved Chorus Railway could whatever did like Thomas themed events they could uh, dress up number seven as Peter Sam although probably in, his, in the as he looks in the railway series books because in the railway series um, I think he him and Falcon now well who is now known as Sir Handel they were both green they were green and blue respectively um, and they used to work on a line that's right I forgot to mention we've got a visitor, uh, a visitor here today, a Hawthorne Leslie 040 saddle tank. Um, people who have seen the Dark Railway series will recognise this engine as, as uh, two of the characters in that sh series, Theo and Otto, are Hawthorne Leslie 040, uh, uh, are Hawthorne Leslie 040s. Uh, another one of the, another engine of this design also appears in the 110th platoon, and I think in that series he's called Roger. And despite being the oldest, uh, despite being the oldest engine there, he still carries the rank. He's still he's still stuck at, at the rank of private. Anyway, uh, I think the points is yeah the points are set to take us up to Paris. We might as well go. I like that animation on the whistle cord, yeah. Something you don't see all that often in this game. Anyway, so as I was saying, well actually I think I'll do a nice departure shot. So please bear with me while I get the engine moving. Notice that I've decided to put a couple of freight wagons on the back of the train. Why I did that, I have no idea. Anyway, so as I was saying, in the railway series, uh, when Stuart and Falcon used to work on the Mid Sodor Railway, which I think is what's now going to go tonight to Halsborough to, what is it, King Ori's Bridge, um, they, that Stuart was green and uh, Falcon was. I think blue. Well, I think it was it was either blue or purple. Uh, and when the mid sodor line closed, uh, which was caused by one of the, well, it wasn't necessarily one single event that caused the closure of the mid sodor line. Basically, they had an engine on there that was called Stanley, not to be confused with the silver saddle tank that debuted in the Great Discovery, a different Stanley. This one was a 460 tank engine from the US, and he was red, and I think he was painted red. Although, even though he was called, St he's known as Stanley to the older, or to fans of the series, 
he was never referred to by name in the actual sto in the actual RWS stories. He was only ever referred to as number two. I say that you know, red, red uh, Duke the Lost Engine, but I think I've seen some adaptations of it on YouTube, so I know enough about it. Anyway, Stanley, I think he was quite reckless and um, he ended up derailing quite a bit and it got to the point where the manager had a nut head was so sick of it that he decided to turn Stanley into like a pumping engine at the I think it was the slate mine at Casney Horwin. And it, I think it was 19, I think by 1946 the traffic on the line had deteriorated to the point where it was basically a, a few hair strands and a thread basically hanging on by only a few measly threads, as it were. Notice that I'm not sure if you can hear it, but the engine is making quite a bit of quite a bit of a buck, as it were, as she tries to climb the gradients. There's one thing I don't like about this route is well, not so much the route, it's mainly it's mainly just this engine. I can't help thinking that she's a bit underpowered. Anyway. So Stanley was the as I said, Stanley was the pumping engine in the Casby Horwin slate mine until about 1946 when he broke down which caused the mine to flood and I think that was the final nail in the coffin if you will and uh, after that I think that was when the Mid Midsodal Railway closed and I think if you remember Duke was left in his shed at Al I think it was Arlesdale and he was left there for ye uh, probably uh, several years I think until the re 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 rescuers found him when one of their team actually fell through the, fell through the roof. Yes, so that was one of my favorite. For some reason that shot of the figure falling through the roof in the TV adaptation of Sleeping Beauty is probably one of I think one of the funnier one of the funnier parts of Thomas the Tank Engine. And I think the Duke's response is simply, excuse me, are you a vandal? The driver told me vandals break and smash things. And then there was a shot of Duke, and a little bit later there was a shot just looking at Duke's face with a really creepy um, smile as it were, well, not, it's, it's not meant to be creepy of course, but it, 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 always, it always made me feel a bit uneasy. Anyway, so in the railway series, when um, Stuart and Falcon were transferred to the Scarlowe Railway uh, at Crowford's Gate, um, both of them were repainted red, it was, back, it was in the railway series, the steam steam engines on the Scarlowe Railway are all red, with the diesels being black. Well, some of you may be aware that, well, in the TV series at least, there really, I think there's only one diesel on the Scarlowe Railway, and that is the, and that is Rusty. However, in the railway series, there, there is one railway series story where they mention a character called Fred, who is a diesel, who is meant to be a diesel working on the line. But he's always portrayed as being lazy and trying to um, wheedle out of, like, well, not necessarily wheedle out of, but try to find excuses to avoid doing work. Um, and always trying to get other engines to do it for him. Almost sounds like, sounds like the same sort of personality that Dennis had. For those that don't remember, Dennis was one of those one-off, was one of the many one-off characters that were brought in or that appeared between seasons 9 and 12, so between like 2006 and 8. Anyway, as you can tell, we're coming up to, coming in, approaching the chorus, and we will have no choice but to run around and head back the other way. Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure, I don't think I will go down to Tony Coy today, in the interest of uh, time, even though I haven't really got anything else happening. After the after I record this, apart from obviously uploading, um, I'm not sure how fast I'm supposed to come into the station. Anyway, so interestingly, in the TV series, the engines on the Scarlowe Railway were never done up. Well, the only engine, well, the only engine on the Scarlowe Railway that was red was Scarlowe himself. The other, I think, Reneus was. Uh, I think he was. He was always orange, if my memory serves me right. Or at least he was sort of orange in season four. Um, yes, 
what else to say about this line. So, yeah, so I guess, as I was saying earlier, you could, I guess, if the Chorus Railway ever did do, like, Thomas-themed events, you could perhaps have... Like, that was a bit of a jolt. Um, you could perhaps have number seven wearing a face and pretending to, or masquerading as Peter Sam, who, who caught, and of course Peter Sam was Stuart's, well, Stuart was renamed Peter Sam after being transferred to the Scarlowe Railway. Yes, and I'm not going to go too fast here, probably no faster than three miles an hour, if I can help it. Because, well, look at how short this head shunt is. I think if we go out to this view, to the free roam view, and if we look down on it, um, like this, you can see it's barely long enough for the engine, for this engine. Actually, I wonder if that would be a good shot. I stupidly didn't think to get any screenshots as we were climbing, or as we were coming up the, up the line. Mm, yes, this is always interesting, because no sooner have you... Interesting how this engine doesn't seem to, uh, isn't that good a steamer, or well, or what I mean is like it doesn't, it doesn't take long before the engine starts losing steam, and it, it takes quite a while to build up pressure again. <coughs> Probably should get some screenshots as we go back down the valley. Um, I suppose now it's got to the point at the typical point in the video where I can't really think of anything to say. Wouldn't be the first time, that's why I said the typical point in the video. Anyway, I will just say now that um, Chorus, the way Chorus Station looks here is nothing like what it is in real life. Instead of a run round loop, instead of a run round loop with an overall roof. It's literally just uh, two sidings with basically no with no shelter whatsoever. Yeah, I think apparently I think well considering the fact that it's got the tannicoid extension, this train sim version of the Chorus Railway uh, I think is technically to be set in the future in some way in one way or another. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is that Skyhook Games were the people that made this route. They have also done, I think, the that Halloween route back in 2014. Uh, they've also done two locomotive, uh, sorry, three locomotive add-ons. The Great Western Railway Star Class, which is one of the earlier Great Western 460 tender engines that I think was developed from the Saint, and the Star itself was later developed into the castle, which was later developed into the king. Anyway, um, the others, that, the other two that Skyhook have made, I've just noticed my cat, is, my cat is just outside. Anyway, um, yeah, as I said, the other two locomotives that Skyhook made were the Class 07. Uh, if you know who Car Thomas' character Salty is, then you'll know that, well, you might know. Nasty bump. And you wouldn't be the first time I've done this sort of thing. Will it couple up properly? Yes, it will. Although I've just noticed the buffer on the engine is sort of phasing through this wooden block on the wagon that's masquerading as a buffer. This is, wait, no. I was just about to check and see if this thing's got inside motion, but obviously it wouldn't because it's got. She's got outside cylinders. But I don't think. I wonder if the motion itself is inside. Well, if it is, um, I certainly can't tell because I don't think this engine. Well, I don't. Yeah, I don't think this engine's actually got any. Hang about. Interesting. It's got this plating 
right underneath the boiler. Well, not really, but I guess I just didn't look at that properly. Yes, even though this is quite a small engine, the amount of detail in the modelling is quite impressive. Of course, I don't think, if I ever tried my hand at 3D modelling, I'm not sure if I'd even be able, ever be able to make anything as good as this. Yeah, as I think, as I said earlier, I, I believe this route, in, well, the transcend route at least, is only about, well, the, when, sorry, the section of the Chorus Railway that's been reinstated between Chorus and Mice Poth. I think that's only three quarters of a mile long. Um, and in Train Simulator, the fact, well, the addition of the section down to Tanikoid, I think, makes the route about two miles long. But either way, oh, so even with that, it really, it, this really is a short route. I think it might be one of the shortest routes in the in, in Train Simulator. N another one of the shortest, I think, is the Malmesbury branch, which I haven't got yet. But what I do know about it is that it's only like a three and a half mile long branch line between Malmesbury and the junction at Little Summerford. Nothing else. I mean, it would be good for the sort of videos that I like to do, where it's just a, sh a relatively short run. But if you want, if you're, if you're the sort of person that wants like a network of lines instead of just a very short branch line, Malmesbury isn't for you. I say that, and yet I've, I don't even have the Malmesbury branch. So who am I to judge? Yes, it's interesting how there's a few spots along this route where the trees are so low that they're. Well, you know, sorry, not necessarily where the trees are so low, but where the trees are, well, the branches of the trees are overhanging on the railway. So I've just noticed there's a, there's a whole lot of cows in the field. Yes, yeah, a few, not, I think, what was it, about an hour or so before I decided to record this video, I I was in downtown Tauranga, as, as is usually the case this week, so it would seem. And I saw a real, well, I saw a, one of the DL class diesel locomotives hauling a break of empty coal wagons towards Mount Monganui. Uh, pictures of, well, that's another thing. Um, usually, whenever I see trains at the moment, it's usually I manage to photograph one train each day. Um, the way I like to do it is if I, I, I get still images of the first train that I see, and if I end up seeing, a se if a second one comes along, then, I've, then that's the, it's the second one that I film. Um, I think tomorrow, well, I'm recording this on, what is it, 3rd of April? So, which is a Wednesday, so tomorrow, Thursday the 4th, I think I might go out purely to watch trains, although we'll watch some trains for a while, although I don't know where, although yeah, I'm not sure where exactly to go, that I can catch the bus to, of course, because that's usually, I feel like a bit of an idiot for saying this, but like I'm, I'm like 18 years old and I still don't have my driver's license. Yes, I'm not, yes, laugh away all you want, um, assuming that people uh, heartless enough to want to laugh at something like that, but well, go ahead and I mean, go ahead and laugh. And as much as I hate, well, I'm not going to quote Billy Joel, so I don't like that guy. Anyway, yeah, I really, well, no, yeah, yeah. To quote Phil Collins, I don't care, I don't care anymore. Yes, I've had uh, quite a bit of uh, cases of people mocking me, as it will, as you, as it were just because I'm interested in railways. And the thing is, I never, I never really, I don't think I should bother talking about my own situations, because that's not what, that's not what you, as far as I know, that, well, I'm assuming that is not what people are here to watch. They're here to watch me mucking around, well, yeah, me sodding about in train simulator with the occasional, um, uh, rolling line video, and obviously the even lit, but, yeah, with the occasional footage of a real train and the and the occasional rolling line video. The reason why I've kind of stopped, while I don't usually do rolling line at the moment, is because, well, the simple reason that I don't really know what to do in that game. I mean, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for the Australian themed update 
to come out. Once that's done, I'll probably make a video on that. Not sure whether or not I'll do commentary on it. I guess it's just, I guess, um, it's just a case of whether or not I can really be bothered. Yes, I, I do apologise for people who think that I sound incredibly smug by saying that. Yeah, scenes like this, well, this part of the line really does remind me of um, the narrow gauge line, well, the, the Scarlowy Railway, as it appears in the TV series, of, well, in the TV series version of Thomas the Tank Engine. Although apparently the Scarlowy Railway in the TV, well, in, apparently in both the railway series and the TV series, the Scarlowy Railway is more closely based on the tally, well, the locomotives at least, are more closely based on the tally flint, not the chorus. Although, of course, uh, you've got the characters Sir Handel and Peter Sam, which are based, well, both of them are based on chorus railway locomotives. Number three, Sir Hayden. Number four, Edward Thomas. Those were the two that were transferred to the tally flint after the original chorus line closed, which, as I said, is around 1947. Yeah, so we're coming back into Moist Poith at the moment, so uh, not really sh uh, actually, I don't think I will bother going going all the way down to Tony Coid, because I can never really seem to get back up to Moist Poith without stopping the engine to raise boiler pressure, which is how steep the line is. Well, it's a combination of how steep the line is and how weak, or how underpowered the engine seems to be. Though, She's done. She's done well today, I think. Uh, just re remembered, I recently watched a video of like a gala weekend at the Chorus right away with the real number seven. <coughs> Sorry, with the real number seven in action. If I can find it, I'll post a link to it in the uh, video description. The tiny diesel shunter there. Oh, I forgot to mention that little thing it's sitting over there stop number seven and go and show you the yellow engine properly. Nice. Look at this little, tiny little thing. This has got to be the smallest locomotive I've, well, yeah, this is definitely one of the smallest, probably the single smallest locomotive we have in Train Simulator at the moment. This is the Chorus Railway number 9, which is a puny, absolutely puny little battery electric locomotive, which I think, I think this is a design that was originally intended for use as on like mine railways, but they couldn't really, I guess, the risk of like an explosion prevented the use of diesel or steam. Well, I suppose if they used diesel, you'd get the emissions, which would be trapped in the mine, and you know what would happen from there. Jeez, I'd hate to be the I'd hate to be that guy or in that guy's position. Seeing as how cramped the cab, for want of a better word, of this engine is. Great, I've just heard I've just heard a horn from a from one of the DL class locomotives. I don't think it's the one I saw earlier today. Um, but anyway, uh, if anyone else is watching this and they also have this route as well as the Union Pacific Big Boy, go put Chorus Number 9 next to a Big Boy. You'll probably laugh yourself silly. <laughs> um, yes, well I think that should do it for today's video. I... Ah, okay, what's going on here? Typical texture glitch. And now a screenshot from the Signalman's perspective. Anyway, uh, yes, this has just been a short little video of me having another look at the Chorus Railway. I hope I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, look look out for more uh, more train simulator and possibly real life train videos from the channel. And uh, I'm not the sort of person I'm not the sort of channel that basically tells you essentially tells you to like and subscribe. I'm I'm. I'm actually, the reason I'm, mainly I'm not is because I think it's a stupid way of doing things. Uh, you shouldn't tell people to subscribe to your channel, you should let them do that of their own accord. 
if you will. Um, that way, when they subscribe, it feels a lot more genuine. Anyway, I uh, guess I'll just uh, leave you here with a nice shot of with a ni just a nice shot of chorus number seven, with the safety valves lifting. I think. Yep. Shut the blower off. Yeah. So I can't really think of much else to say. So I guess I'll I guess I'll just say the usual thing, um, which is yeah, goodbye. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Woo!